you very much, uh, Mr. Agopanos Yan, for inviting me and for this very kind presentation. First of all, I want to express my gratitude for everything you've done in Armenia. I am very familiar with the Armenian economic and social environment, and uh, during my different mandates as Minister for Economy and for Finance, I uh, try to establish economic connections with uh, our uh, Hyrenik, with our motherland. My personal opinion is that the period of sponsorship or of benevolence uh, is, uh, we have to let it in the past because now we have to help Armenia to carry out itself. And uh, your initiative to focus on startup projects, on angel projects, on small and medium sized enterprises, and uh, on uh, creativity, I think is the best solution for Armenia to going ahead, uh, to go ahead on, this, on uh, its own. Uh, this is the first one. The second one, uh, they say that Armenia needs us, but I think that we need Armenia maybe more than Armenia needs us. I remember my grandparents, they dreamed to the motherland. They sang and during my childhood uh, Armenian songs like Gerung, like Dzernag, like uh, Ingilia, and crying they dreamed to our motherland. And always when I go to Armenia and I am uh, invited to, to, to have a speech, I start uh, uh, sing, uh, saying that I dedicate my speech to my grandparents because uh, I think that they deserve more than my generation to have now their independent, sovereign motherland. And I want to congratulate ARPA uh, and uh, to, to, to wish all the success in the world for supporting our motherland. Thank you very much, Mr. Barosian. Yeah. Now about Romania. Uh, the Romanian, uh, Armenian community <coughs> is uh, very unique in the world. Uh, it's a very unique, why? <coughs> because it's one of the oldest Armenian communities. Unfortunately, it's quite unknown because during the communist period, uh, the, the Romanian Armenian community was uh, a little bit isolated. But uh, I think that uh, all the Armenians in the world have to know that this community uh, uh, has a tradition going to the 11th, 12th century, when uh, after uh, the break of uh, Bagratuni Kingdom, Armenians went on the north of the Black Sea to Poland, and they went down to Moldavia, and they established the first communities and the first Armenian churches in the uh, 13th, 14th century. <coughs> we can imagine that our uh, Arachnort, our bishop, Datem Agopian, is the 42nd Arachnort of our community. The first one was nominated in 1401 by the Patriarch of Constantinople. And uh, since then, we have had continuously an uh, Episcopos Agarator, uh, and uh, our bishop is the 42nd one. We celebrated when all the Armenians in the world celebrated 1,700 years of, uh, of uh, official orthodoxy. We celebrated in Romania the 600th anniversary of uh, our uh, uh, Episcopal center. Uh, we have still churches coming from the 14th century. For example, in a city named Botoshan, the church was founded in, uh, in the middle of the 14th century. Uh, we had in Romania a city named Armenopolis uh, in the, uh, in around uh, 1700. And that city, Armenopolis, was uh, managed completely by Armenians, 
the mayor of the city was an Armenian, and uh, they followed the juridical system of Mohitar Koch. And this city remained Armenian till the very beginning of the 20th century. In that city, Arbenopoli, the Armenians, they built the biggest Armenian church existing in the world at that time. Uh, I have to confess that they were Catholics. I mean, uh, uh, unified Catholics, I mean, Eastern Catholics. And that church in uh, Arbenopolis had 40 meters height, and in the church uh, you can receive more than 2,000 people. Uh, end of 20th century, they built San Vartan in New York, and after that, Surki Kordos of origin Yerevan. So that church is maybe the third in uh, in the world, uh, following uh, uh, its uh, its uh, dimensions. Uh, the Armenian community in Romania was very much rooted in the history of Romania. Uh, you, you can't find uh, uh, important events in Romanian modern history when you can't find an Armenian. And maybe the most interesting. Uh, uh, fact is that uh, after the War of Independence in 1877, when uh, the Turks they accepted uh, to be defeated by Romanian and Russian troops, Osman Pasha, uh, the, the commander of the Turkish troops, he gave his, his sword to an officer named Cherkez. And Cherkez was an Armenian. So the Turks they accepted. They are defeated in front of an Armenian. And uh, when now we commemorated 100 years from the first war, the first and the most important victim given by Romanians was another Armenian officer named Gabriel Prunku. Prunku means Manukian. Manukian was his name, uh, Prunku means Manuk in, uh, in uh, Romanian. So this is the reason why, after uh, uh, the break of the communism, when we restarted the activity of the Armenian community, we thought that the best way to get our rights as national minority is not to make lobby. We are not lobbyists in Romania. It's to be part of the political class. And we uh, decided to enter politics as Armenians. It was a unique case uh, in, in the world when the Armenian community was part of the political uh, environment. Union of Armenians in Romania uh, participates in elections. And we have a seat in the parliament won by elections. And the Armenian deputy is a representative of the community. He's a speaker of the community. And in the same time, by tradition, the Armenian representative is a leader of the parliamentary group of national minorities. So the Armenian is a speaker of more than one million and a half Romanian citizens. This is the reason why we uh, uh, succeeded to bring to the Armenian communities more rights than every other community in the world. You can't find in the world any Armenian community enjoying the same opportunities like Armenians in Romania. I was for six years the representatives of the Armenian community in the parliament. After that, I created my own party following the ideology of Ronald Reagan as conservative. And I uh, gave to my uh, Vice President, the opportunity to represent the community. Now we have in the Parliament three Armenians uh, with uh, full rights. We are not observers in the Parliament. We are represented in Parliament like all other parliamentarians. Now about our rights. You can imagine that in Romania, the Union of Armenians has a special article in the Romanian budget for us. Every year, the Armenian community receives from the government around 1.2 million dollars for our activities. 
cultural activities, activities, uh, uh, ordinary activities like I don't know, different uh, uh, events and so on. And this amount of money is voted in the budget. Our priests, they receive salary from the budget. Two thirds of the wages come from the budget. We don't have uh, daily schools because our communities now counts around four, five thousand people in all the country. But our uh, the Sunday schools, the teachers, they receive wage from the state. And the textbooks are printed by the Ministry of Education. Our newspapers are supported by this, so on and so on and so on. And why? Because we understood that it is very important to be part of the game and not to be only out of the game, applying to others to follow your own rights. The community has a very uh, important intellectual standard because, you know, during the communist period, it was forbidden to follow private initiatives. Uh, we didn't have Armenian Korzarar businessmen. This is the reason why all the Armenians, they follow the school and they all of them, they have high level education. This is the reason uh, uh, the standards, the uh, intellectual standards of the community is very high. Uh, and, uh, but the main problem for us, maybe like for you, because now, unfortunately, I'm com compelled to speak in English. Because it's impossible to put together five Armenians and to use the mother tongue, because one of them is not familiar with the language. Because we have now internet, we have a very large communication between us, we travel a lot in a Christian country. There are mixed marriages, and this is the reason why it's difficult for us to preserve our mother tongue. So I think that in diaspora, our main problem is uh, urban identity. And for not uh, uh, forgetting our identity, I think that uh, the, the Armenians who enjoyed an Armenian education, they have to explain what they learned from their parents and from their grandparents and to give to the new generation this, uh, this treasury they received. I didn't follow Armenian school because the Armenian school was closed in Romania as the last one in 1962. I was born in 58. But my first teacher was my grandparent, my grandfather, Garabet Voskanian. He uh, was very high level educated in uh, Turkey. He received the uh, Bolsagan Gertutyun, which, in my opinion, is, was the highest in that period. Because in, in Bolis were the biggest, the brilliant intellectual class of Armenians. And uh, I was teacher. I was never been a uh, fellow, but I was teacher. In 78, when I came to Bucharest as a student, I founded the Sunday School. And I was teacher of Armenian for 15 years. But I received from my grandparents another treasury, the memory. You know, for us, for the Armenians, the memory is not part of the past. The memory is part of the present. We live with our past. We live with our memory. I think there is no any Armenian family in the world without having its victims, its martyrs. Maybe sometimes around the table, during the lunch or the dinner, maybe we, we, we could put a plate for our ancestors, victims or martyrs. We live with them. And you know, there is no anything in the world unifying people like the, the suffering. This is the reason why maybe there is no in the world a single Armenian. I don't know if you're familiar, but they existed in the world Armenians alone, in Singapore, in Congo, they build churches, being alone there, without any other Armenian 
in neighborhood. But they didn't feel alone. Because you know, if you see on the plane a tree, the tree is not alone. Because with his, its roots, he communicates with all the trees in the world, with the underground waters. This is the same for us, for the Armenians. We communicate with your, our tradition, with our past. Every Armenian is part, you know, I don't know if you saw that movie, Avatar, where all the people, <coughs> they are aware, unified by the same thoughts, by the same memories. It's the same for us. Somebody asked me, where you come from? I didn't answer, I'm from Romania, no. I said, I'm from Erzurum, from Afyon Karaisar, from Bolis. Because my grandparents came from that place. The same for you. You're not from, I don't know, Beirut or Buenos Aires. All of us, we are from there. We have the same room. When I was for the first time in Beirut, I was very surprised to see that we use the same language. We have the same habitus, the same cuisine, the same uh, tarzavatsks uh, of, of words, the same cockney. We practically are neighbors on the same street, on the same neighborhood. We come, all of us, from the same place. Maybe this is the reason why we choose orange as our national item, national color. Because the orange is a color we can see from, uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, any distance. The orange is the most pregnant color you see from any distance. And we choose orange because we are an orange nation. When I was, uh, some, I was in Barcelona, to the uh, Worldwide Congress of Oil. And uh, the, Armenian ambassador, uh, uh, the Romanian ambassador came with me. Around 200 ministers of economy and energy across the world. And I told to my minister, please give me 15 minutes. I will find the Armenian. <laughs> and after five minutes, I said to him, come with me. And it was some some uh, some uh, people discussing. One of them, I asked him, "You're an Armenian?" Yes, he told me. And I said, "The mist, the, 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 the secret of Armenians is here: the root of the nose and the point where the eyes unify. Here, here is the heart core of the Armenians. The right center of perfumes, the right center of thoughts, the right center of the melancholies, our black eyes." So this is a miracle for us that we survive and uh, this miracle has to be explained. This is the reason why I wrote this book, the Book of Whispers. I, uh, I selected this title because I followed the symbol given to us by, uh, by uh, like uh, Psalms of Grigor of Nareg. Grigor of Nareg wrote a book named the Book of Lamentations, Vohperkutian Madian. Uh, which is uh, uh, the, the, maybe the most uh, uh, eloquent, uh, clear expression of our capacity to suffer. And uh, to get from suffering the power to live, to love, and to survive. And following the symbol of the Book of Lamentations, I wrote after a thousand years, the Book of Whispers. This book is a book of the identity of Armenian people. You can find there, uh, starting from, I don't know, the cuisine, the music, uh, the jokes, Armenians, till our faith, our heroes, our melancholies and hopes. In the same time, you can find there a lot of Armenian heroes. Antranik Zoravar, Nathan Shahan Natali, Armen Garo, and others, and others, the Tashak Tsagan, the Hinchagyan, and others who died for the uh, for independence of Armenia, of the Republic of Armenia, and uh, for uh, dignity. 
you can find at the same time the uh, history of the first massacres in 1895, the massacre of Adana, 1909, uh, the genocide, 1915. The genocide is described like a pilgrimage going to death, uh, with uh, uh, starting with uh, Raqqa, uh, Bab, till Derzor. Derzor was the first concentration camp in the history of the world. Unfortunately, our uh, genocide is not very much known, like the Holocaust in the memory of the humankind. There are different uh, explanations for that, but we don't have time for any other explanation now. We have to, 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 to present the facts, and uh, my personal opinion is that the 20th century will not uh, finish till the genocide will not be recognized. In a symbolic way, despite the fact that we are in the second, first century, we live still in the 20th century because we didn't recognize the Armenian genocide. And at the same time, you'll find there uh, humble people, ordinary people, uh, people who suffer the history instead of, of living it. You know, the big difference between history and literature is the following. In the history, the characters, the heroes, are the winners. The emperors, the generals, I don't know, the commanders. In the literature, the heroes are the defeated people. In the history, that is abstract. During the Armenian genocide, 1.5 million people died. What does it mean? 1.5 followed by five zeros. But if you give name to the suffering, and you put their names, their existence, things are completely different. The literature has another capacity to produce emotion. The Holocaust was not a political phenomenon, it was a cultural phenomenon. The American public opinion understood uh, the, the apocalyptic dimension of the Holocaust after following the movie Holocaust in the 70s, if I remember well. So the serial Holocaust given in, uh, in America on TV. And after that, the, the, the Jews, they produced books, movies, and so on and so on. The same for us. The politics are not enough for that. Maybe the novel of Franz Werfel made more than 1,000 political statements for the recognition of the Armenian genocide. You know which is a problem? And I will finish my presentation with that. I'm in, I'm in politics. My country uh, uh, proposed my name as the first commissioner, a Romanian commissioner in the Council and the European uh, Commission. I mean, the European Commission is uh, composed by 27 men. It's the government of Europe. And in 2006, Romania proposed my name for taking part in the government of Europe. In two days, it was a huge Turkish lobby across the world. And after four days, I resigned from that my candidature because uh, they, with in, in a conjunction with the Brotherhood, with some of my enemies in the Romanian politics, they produced a lot of lies against me, and unfortunately I lost my candidate. But I understood something that time, that we have to continue our uh, uh, fight, our challenge for the recognition of the Jews. Why? You know, in, 2000, in 1915, in Anatolia lived around 3 million Armenians. Half of them were killed. Practically, our people were half. Half of them dead, half of them survivors. Now, the number of the descendants of dead survivors is around 6-7 million. Maybe after other 50 years, 
their number will be 15 million. If you take into account that the number of the survivors and the number of victims is equal, we can agree that the number of victims now is not more 1.5 million, it's 7 million. After other 50 years, their number will be 15 million. They multiply themselves in the underground world like us. Whereas I was born in 25 of July, July 1958, in the world of death, was born a child with my name. You know, we are two. A Varujan living here and another Varujan living there. Everybody of us is halt. Like if you know Persephone, the goddess of ancient Greeks, who lived half of the time in the world of death and half of the time in the uh, world of, of uh, life. Everybody was, of us is halt. We live in the same time in two different worlds. We have to find our, uh, uh, our uh, half part. We have to become entire ourselves. But it's not possible to do us alone. For unify ourselves, everybody of us and the Armenian people, we need international solidarity. We need the support for the, of the humanity. This is the reason why we need the recognition of the genocide. Because it's the only way to find our house part living in the underground world. It's something in us, in everybody of us, a Armenian, which is not with us. And we succeed to unify ourselves, maybe during Vartanans, when we evoke our heroes, during the day of 24th of April, and during Christmas or Zadig. But we need to find the second, the other part of our people. This is the reason why we need international solidarity for us. Because, and uh, the second question, why you don't accept compassion for massacres? Why you are asking for the recognition of the genocide? Because the difference, there is no any difference between genocide and massacre taking into account the victim. Because during massacres, you kill people. During genocide, you kill people. So different. There are a couple, couple of differences. The first difference is that uh, the massacre is a crime punished by the internal laws. The genocide is punished by the international law. The second one is a massacre, the crime, has a period after that 25 years is uh, comes uh, forgiveness, amnesty. The genocide is a crime without amnesty, unprescriptable. But the third one, which is very, maybe the most symbolic, imp uh, important, is that during the massacre you kill people, during the genocide you kill people, but you kill at the same time a civilization. This is a huge difference between Holocaust and the Armenian genocide. Because when the Jews went to Germany, they found the Germans there. When the Turks went to Anatolia, they found the Armenians there. The natives of Anatolia are the Armenians, not the Turks. The Turks destroyed not only communities, they destroyed the civilization. We let there around three, four thousand churches. We let there cemeteries. We let there schools, and so on, and so on, and so on. We ask the right to reborn our civilization. We need the recognition of what the Armenians brought to the human. The humanity to the human civilization. 
This is the reason why this is for us, for everybody of us, a duty, a sacred duty. This is the reason why we uh, go ahead, shoulder by shoulder, with our uh, martyrs, with our past. But without avoiding, of course, the challenge of the future. Because it is not enough to evoke the past. You have at the same time to have the capacity to see ahead, to have a perspective. Memory and perspective are the two sides of the coin uh, of the Armenian destiny. I brought to you now the memories. I'm very glad that ARPA brought the perspective. We need in the same time our memory without the future. Why? Because uh, our memory shows to us how to carry out which is a path and the future could rescue the wounds of the past. Thank you very much. Manele Hanti Suteren Araci, Arite Urețan, Hairen Hozie, se zic că și la Ravorem, Vorain Can Love, Hairen Nagdira Vedec. Și la Ravorem, Vorain Can Love, Hairen Nagdira Vedec.